Hello everyone. Uh, myself, Dr. Vichira Goyal from Adhya Kumar Girls Engineering College, Gazebad. Uh, today, my topic for uh, uh, teaching is Statistical Techniques 1, uh, whose code is KS302 oblique 402 and the subject is Mathematics 4. So, in this uh, topic, I will be taking up the contents, uh, correlation, uh, rank correlation and some examples based on them. So, first of all, I would like to define what is correlation. So, uh, correlation uh, in a bivariate distribution, if change in one variable affects change in other variable, then the variables are said to be correlated. If two variables, they deviate in the same direction, then that means either they are increasing or they are decreasing then result of one will affect a corresponding increase in the other one. So, such a correlation is said to be positive correlation. But if uh, instead of increasing there is a decrease, then uh, that will be a negative correlation. Now, in correlation, we, uh, we take an example. For example, we take income and expenditure. So, in income, uh, if the income of an individual will increase, then uh, obviously expenditure will also increase. So, th uh, this is an example of positive correlation. Whereas, in case of uh, uh, price and demand, uh, since they both are uh, oppositely re uh, related, that means if price will increase, then obviously the demand will go down. So, that is an example of a negative correlation. So, correlation is both positive as well as negative. Now, correlation is said to be perfect if the deviation in one variable is followed by corresponding proportional deviation in the other one. So, uh, that means if uh, one is increasing a slight bit, then the other must also increase in the same manner or must decrease in the same manner. So, that will be a proportional deviation and that will be a perfect example of correlation. Now, for measuring correlation because correlation is required to be measured. So, how we will measure correlation? So, for uh, finding out uh, this value, we will use this Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation also known as product movement correlation coefficient. Now, this is denoted by this symbol Rxy. This x and y are the variables which are related to each other. So, uh, r is the correlation coefficient and these are the variables which are related. So, what we will do there is a formula uh, that we will find sig summation of xi minus x bar. x bar is the mean of x and this y bar is the mean of y. So, uh, x bar and y bar we will come to know from the data which is given to us and x i or y i will be provided to us. So, we will take summation value of x i minus x bar into y i minus y bar and we will divide this value by under root of sigma x i minus x bar whole square. That means, we will take, we will find x i minus x bar and then we will take its square and after that we will take the summation. And similarly, we will find uh, y i minus y bar whole square take its summation and then we will multiply both the values. So, y i minus y bar is also found, summation y i minus y bar whole square is also found and we take the under root thereafter. If we divide numerator and denominator by 1 upon n. So, this 1 upon n will be uh, when going inside the under root, it will be 1 upon n uh, along with x i minus x bar whole square summation as well as with x i y i minus y bar whole square summation. So, uh, this fo same formula which was uh, there earlier can be written in this form also. This can further be written as 1 upon n sigma x i minus x bar into y i minus y bar divided by sigma x and sigma y. So, this value uh, sigma x is actually this value and this sigma y means uh, sigma y is the value of sigma 
सिग्मा वाई इज वन बाय एन सिग्मा वाई आई माइनस वाई बार होल स्क्वायर सो दीज आर द टू वैल्यूज एंड हेंस वी हैव दिस आर एक्स वाई इज इक्वल टू समीशन एक्स माइनस एक्स बार वाई माइनस वाई बार हियर सिंस दिस समीशन इज मैंशनड दैट मीन्स इट इज ओवर फॉर ऑल वैल्यूज ऑफ एक्स एंड फॉर ऑल वैल्यूज ऑफ वाई एंड दिस वन अपॉन एन विच वॉज देयर इन द न्यूमरेटर दिस वी हैव टेकन ओवर हियर नाउ सो इन दिस वे दिस को रिलेशन कोपिशेंट इज रिटन एज एन सिग्मा एक्स वाई माइनस सिग्मा एक्स सिग्मा वाई अपॉन अंडर रूट सिग्मा एक्स स्क्वेयर माइनस सिग्मा एक्स होल स्क्वेयर इन टू अंडर अंडर रूट सिग्मा सिग्मा वाई स्क्वेयर माइनस सिग्मा वाई होल स्क्वेयर now there are some properties of pearson's coefficient of correlation so the first property is that the value of r is always between minus 1 and 1 the simple reason being that either the two variables will be uh, properly correlated that means positively correlated so maximum value between uh, them will, uh, of r can be one because they are 100% correlated or they are negatively correlated in the negative sense so that can be minus 1 or else if they are suppose related in uh, some particular proportion so in that situation uh, the value of uh, r will lie between minus 1 and 1 so if the relationship between x and y is positive then r will be positive if the relationship between x and y is negative then r will be negative so there is no relationship between x and y then in that situation r will be zero so if two variables are not correlated in any form then the value of r will be zero now value of r will be plus 1 that means uh, if the points xi and yi they lie on a straight line with positive slope but if they lie on a straight line with negative slope the value will be minus 1 now we consider we take an example suppose we want to find the coefficient of correlation between the values of x and y now this table is given to us we are given Uh, 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 values total and correspondingly y is also given to us and we have to find the coefficient of correlation so what we need is that we have just uh, considered the formula uh, this was the formula uh, this was the formula which we have taken so in this formula uh, we need uh, sigma x sigma y we need sigma x square sigma x whole square sigma y square and sigma y whole square so uh, basically when we have to find coefficient of correlation of x and y we need sigma x we need sigma y we need sigma x square sigma y square and sigma x y so we will form this columns which are not available with us so to solve this uh, example we will make column of x square y square and x y corresponding to each x when we take the summation we get the total value sum as 34 as we can see and corresponding to y we get the summation of y as 90 corresponding to x square this will be 1 9 25 49 64 100 and so we will get the total sum value as 248 and corresponding to y square we will have 64 144 225 Two eight nine three twenty four four hundred. When we take the sum of all the values, we get the sum as one four four six. That means uh, we will have uh, this sigma x y also. So this sigma x y uh, will give us the value as um, x y is eight. This is one into eight. Then three into twelve is thirty six. Then five into fifteen, this is seventy-five. Then seven into seventeen, this is one one nine. Then eight into eighteen, this is one 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 four four. And then ten into twenty, which is two hundred. So total sum comes out to be five eighty-two. So we will put all these values in Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation, which is given by this formula n sigma x y. now my sigma xy was 852 582 so uh, i have substituted 582 then sigma x was 34 so i have substituted uh, 
34 then sigma y was 90 so i have substituted this 90 divided by under root my n was in uh, in the previous case i have just seen there were six observations which was given to us so n was 6 and i am having sigma x square so sigma x square was 248 so i am having sigma x square that is 248 into 6 which is the value of n and sigma x whole squares my sigma x was 34 so here i have substituted 34 whole square similarly my this was my sigma y square my sigma y square was 1446 so sigma x was 34 sigma y was 90 then sigma x square was 248 sigma y square was 1446 and sigma xy is 582 the n number of observations of the data which is given is 6. So, I have substituted the value in the formula for finding Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation. After evaluating, I get the value of r as 0.9879. That means my two variables x and y are 98.79 percent related because r is 0.9879. So, to find the percentage also we can use this value of r. Now, there is one thing to be noted that correlation coefficient is independent of change of origin and scale. So, that means that if we change the origin or the scale then the value of coefficient of correlation remains unaffected. So, for this uh, we will uh, use u as the new variable uh, where we are changing the scale by h and we are changing the origin of x by a. So, u is substituted as x minus a upon h. Similarly, for v, we are using v for changing the scale and origin for y. So, we are taking v as y minus b. b is the used for changing the origin of y and we will divide this by k which is being used for changing the scale of y. So, a, b, h, k are constants then the property says that r x y must be equal to r u v. So, that means if instead of x y we replace the variables u and v in the formula for r x y we must get the same value. So, the formula for coefficient of correlation of u and v will be n sigma u v into minus sigma u into sigma v divided by under root n into sigma u square minus summation u whole square into under root n sigma v square minus sigma v whole square. Now, to understand this uh, better let us consider an example. So, here we are having uh, an example where we have to find the coefficient of correlation for the following table. Now, as we can see that here x and y the values are 10, 14, 18, 22, 26, 30 for x and for y are 18, 12, 24, 6, 30 and 36. Now, Though we can proceed directly to find the coefficient of correlation, but uh, since if we want to take the, uh, if we want to take sigma x square or we want to take sigma y square or sigma x y, then this data will become too large to handle actually. So, what we will do that instead of working directly with the given values of x and y, we will replace x and y by u and v. Now, when we want to replace x and y by u and v, in that situation, uh, we will 
consider u equal to x minus 22 upon 4. Now, since we have to take u equal to x minus a upon h. So, I am taking my a as 22 and my h as 4. Now, the question ar arises, how I have considered a and h. So, when, when I look at the values of x, I can find that between 10 and 14, 14 and 18, 18 and 22, 22 and 26, 26 and 30, all the values are having difference of 4. So, I have taken the, my change of scale value h as 4 and uh, this a is chosen normally uh, by our own um, wish. If the values are equispaced, I can use 18 also as a, I can use 22 also, I can use any origin for changing x. So, uh, I have taken 22, uh, you may also take 18 and then also you can proceed and the final answer won't be affected. But uh, here I have considered 22. Similarly, uh, for y, again we have the same problem, uh, the values are equispaced, though they may not seem to be, because you may be thinking that after 18 I am having 12, after 12 I am ha having 24 and after 24 I am having 6. But if I have a total look at the span of the values of y, so the y values which are actually provided to me are 6, 12, uh, then 18, then 24, then 30 and then 36. So, there are total 6 values of y which are, uh, which, is, which are given to me and each is at a distance of 6 from each other. So, that is why I have taken this 6 as my value for k and this 24 again is chosen as the preferable value. I can use 18 also in this situation. I have chosen a larger value in both the cases so that my calculation becomes simplified when I change the scale. So, now to find the uh, coefficient of correlation since I am changing the scale, I will use the formula of change of scale that is R u v equal to n sigma u v sigma u into sigma v divided by under root n sigma u square minus sigma u whole square n sigma v square minus sigma v whole square under root. So, what I need is now I need these values to be created. What I need? I need the value for sigma u, I need value for sigma v, then I need value for sigma u square, I need sigma v square, I need sigma u v. n obviously is known to me in this question, n is given to us, n is given to be 6 in this particular situation because I am having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 values. So, n is 6 in this question. Now, to make the table of u and v, I will make the table in this manner. Since u was x minus 22 divided by 4 and v was y minus 24 divided by 6. So, I get u as minus 3, 10 minus 22 divided by 4 is minus 3, then I get 10 minus 22 divided by 4 minus 2, then 18 minus 22 divided by 4 is minus 1, then obviously corresponding to 22 I will get 0 and then 26 will give me 1 and 30 will give me 2. In the same manner, when I find out V, I get minus 1, minus 2, 0, minus 3, 1 and 2 because this is minus 1 corresponding to 18 minus 24. divided by 6. This is 12 minus 24 divided by 6. This is 24 minus 24 divided by 6 and so on and so forth. So, this one is 20, uh, this is 20, this is 6 minus 24 divided by 6. Then this is 30 minus 24 divided by 6 and this is 36 minus 24 divided by 6. So, I am getting sigma u as minus 3, I am getting sigma v as minus 3. It is not difficult for me to find out u square and v square because I just need to square the values minus 3 gives me 9, minus 2 gives me 4, 1 gives me 1. 
zero gives me zero, one gives me one, and two gives me four. Similarly, I get v square also. So I get v square summation as nineteen. I get u square sigma u square summation as nineteen. Both the values are coincidentally coming out to be nineteen, though it is not necessary. That in all such situations we get the same sigma u sigma v. They may turn out to be different. Similarly, sigma u square and sigma v square can also turn out to be different. But uh, in this situation, I will also find u v. So u v will be taken product uh, minus three into minus one is three. Then minus two into minus two will give me four. And then zero uh, minus one into zero will give me zero. Again, zero into minus three gives me zero. And again, one into one gives me one, and two into two gives me four. So I get sigma u v as twelve. Now, when I get all the summations, now the only task left is to put all these values in the uh, expression for r u v. So to find out uh, the regression coefficient, uh, the coefficient of correlation for regression, we will get uh, we will put sigma u v. So my sigma u v was coming out to be Twelve in the uh, last value. So let me write the values of sigma u v was equal to uh, I'm getting sigma u v as twelve. I was getting sigma u as Minus three sigma v was minus three, and sigma u square was equal to nineteen, which was also equal to sigma v square. So putting all these values, I get R U V value as point six. That means the two variables u and v are sixty percent related. But I have just mentioned. In this slide, that correlation coefficient is independent of change of origin and scale. That means R X Y is equal to R U B. So therefore, this is the same value which I will get for R X Y also. That means R X Y will be equal to R U B equal to point six. That means X Y are also sixty percent related to each other. As u and v are related to each other, so this is a number, and I can just see that this value is between minus one and one. That means this is the uh, co correlation coefficient for our required data. So there is something more which is relate, uh, which is present in correlation. Sometimes we may not have a quantitative measurement available. We may have a qualitative measurement which is available to us. So in that situation, we have to deal with such problems with the help of rank correlation. Mm -hmm. Now, rank correlation says that uh, we have qualitative assignment available. So we we can find the rank and then we can relate the two variables qualitatively also. So what we do? We assign ranks to various qualities, and Carl Pearson's coefficient of correlation between x i's and y i's in that situation is known as rank correlation coefficient. Uh, and obviously, this is between the characteristics for that group of individuals which are being related. So, how we proceed to find rank correlation? Let us have a look at it. So, to find rank correlation, this is Pearsman's rank correlation coefficient is found. Rho is found. Now, how do we find it? Uh, we arrange the observations on x in increasing order and assign them the ranks one to n. Suppose we have certain observations on X which are available to us. It may be the way. It may be the qualities. Uh, so we will assign uh, them ranks starting from the highest to the lowest. So the highest value will be uh, will be given rank one, and then two, and then so on and so forth. In the same way, uh, we can also arrange the observations on Y in increasing order, and assign them the ranks one to n so same process is followed for y as well 
for any case i let x i and y i they denote the observations on x and y so for any case i if we have x i and y i as the notations for the observations of x and for y we can denote r i and s i as the two ranks on x and y respectively then rank correlation coefficient r is given by the formula 1 minus 6 sigma di square now this question arises what is this di this di is actually equal to uh, this di this di is equal to r i minus s i that means rank of one variable minus rank of another variable and since we are taking sigma di square so obviously it does not make a difference whether I take r i minus s i or I take s i minus r i because obviously um, the square will balance out the negative value of d i if it comes at all. So, uh, wherever the negative value of r i minus s i is there when we take the square then that is considered in a positive way. So, this 6 is fixed but this n will depend on the number, number of values which are given for x and y that means the number of observations which will be given to us. So, how we will apply this? Suppose we have this uh, problem where the marks secured by recruits in the selection test x and in the proficiency test y are given. So, we have total 9 observations that means n will be 9 in this situation which are given to us and we have x and y as the marks for selection test and for proficiency test. Now to calculate the rank correlation we are asked to calculate the rank correlation coefficient we have to calculate this rank correlation coefficient. So to calculate this we will have a look at all the values of x which are available to us. If I have a look at the values of x which are available to me I can see this that this 24 is the largest value of x. So this is given rank 1 then next smallest value after 24 in the entire values of x is 22. So this is given rank 2 then next smallest value out of all the values is 17. So this is 3 given rank 3 then next is 16 this is given rank 4 then next is 15 so this is given 5 rank then next is 14 so this is given 6 rank then 13 so this is given 7 rank then 12 is given 8 and this last value smallest value out of all the values of x is uh, 10 so it is given rank 9 total all the ranks are consumed fine so we start with the ranking for y now of all the values of y which I am having available I can see that 46 is the largest so it is given rank 1 then the next is 45 so it is given rank 2 then next is um, is 42 so this is given rank 3 the next is 40 it is given 4 rank the next is 39 5 rank then next is uh, 35 so this is given 6 then next is 34 so this is given 7 rank then next is 33 so this is 8 rank then next is 30 so this is given 9th rank. So, all the ranks for y are also consumed fine. So, now what we will do? We will consider the difference of these two values. So, 9 minus 9 is 0. So, 5 minus 3 2. Then 8 minus 2 is 6. Then 3 minus 1 is 2. Then 7 minus 8. This is minus 1. So, I won't write it as positive. I will write it as negative. Then uh, 4 minus 7 is minus 3. Then 1 minus 4 is minus 3, 6 minus 6 is 0, 2 minus 5 is minus 3. So, 
one thing to note down is that the sum of all the differences if i add 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus minus 1 plus minus 3 minus 3 0 and minus 3 this turns out to be 0 that means sigma di must be 0 always if my ranking is correct it cannot be any other value other than 0 though sigma d square this can turn out to be anything it cannot be 0 it will turn out to be some value because I am taking the square of the terms ok. So, this is 0 4 36 4 1 9 9 0 9 when I take the summation it turns out to be 72. So, r turns out to be 1 minus 6 this 6 is the uh, fixed number which was there in the formula then n is 9. So, I am having 9 into 9 squared that is 81 minus uh, 81 minus 1. So, this turns out to be 80 and this sigma di square is 72. So, the value turns out to be 0.4 that means the two variables x and y are related with each other by the rank value as 0.4. Thank you. I hope this session is important and is clear to you.